Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel. Not the match, not the way I wanted to come back to be live streaming with you guys. It's been a while. It's been a while. I actually checked just before I came on live with you guys. It's been almost a month since I've done a live stream. Almost a month. So yeah, it's been a while. I feel actually a bit rusty. Like uh, I don't know what to, what to do, but I'm sure we'll get into it and obviously uh, your comments and everything. Actually, let me just adjust the camera. There you go. Your comments and everything will help me um, to dissect this match, to analyze this match. It was not an enjoy Limone Ball type of match. At some point it was when we, you know, some nice moments, some nice goals. Uh, but in the end, we're here to discuss Inter 2, Cagliari 2. Cagliari came back twice to um, equalize against Inter. Very, very surprising result, even with the, this wasn't even a rotated team. This was a full strength team. So very, very surprising and disappointing result. But obviously the first thing that we got to talk about, guys, isn't it? I'll put it as the thumbnail. It's the main talking point. The goal that Cagliari scored, I, I cannot, it's not even about crying or, you know, clearly we are going to win this league and win the second star, but objectively, when we're talking about a match, match that we're watching, that was just an awful, awful decision. I do not understand how this was not reviewed by VAR, or if it was, how the hell did it get past that review? Why it wasn't called off? How the referee let this happen? And if they did... um as Lucas says here, I mean, I don't think it's the ref that's going to get suspended. It's probably the VAR team or whatever. They need to be suspended because how how is La Padula allowed to do that? Whether it was intentional or not intentional, um, he had a direct, his, his hand touching and directing the ball towards uh, Viola, who scored the goal, had a direct impact into um, into the goal, into the, the play. So... As far as I, if the, maybe I don't know, maybe I don't understand football enough or the rules enough, but surely that is a goal that should not stand. And yeah, Marcello, we got robbed. Uh, this could have been maybe a um, early, not early celebration because it wouldn't have been confirmed. But if we won this game, we would have gone into the Milan derby with just needing a draw against the, our cousins, the Milanisti. But Cagliari, fair play to them. They've kind of, you know, kept this going. And I will actually, speaking of, you know, Cagliari could have actually won it in the end. I mean, yes, they shouldn't have maybe got the goal for the 2-2. But <laughs> Viola, this guy who scored the second goal at the end, had a massive, massive chance right, you know, a few yards off uh, away from uh, from Zoma. Again, La Padula assisting him on the counter-attack. Very, very easy potential chance. Yes, maybe, you know, he had run like, what, 50, 60 yards sprinting. By the time he got there, he probably was tired, but, you know, he should have tucked that away. So Inter probably could have or should have even lost this game in the end. Uh, but, of course, as I keep saying, very, very heavily influenced by that awful, awful decision. Awful, awful decision. But anyway, before we continue, just give, let me give a, because I've been here for a while, let me just give a shout out to the people in the house. And 61 people, it's good to see people have not unsubscribed to the channel. Channel members, I apologize, you guys, you know, contributing and helping the channel you're not getting your money's worth but thank you for the people that have stayed on it's just been one of those you know a few weeks i mean we had the international break in between as well that's why there's not been that many live stream i did continue to do to do videos and stuff in between but over the last week or so i've been away in munich for work but now i am back um matia of course channel um what do you call that um Admin, uh, moderator, that's the word I was looking for, moderator, that's how long I've been out of this, uh, Mattia, hope you're doing well, Brate, last five games, not good from us, yeah, you're right, like, if we look back at the last few fixtures by Inter, I mean, first, let's pull up the table, just because it, it looks nice, doesn't it, guys, it just looks nice seeing Inter at the top, as always, uh, Milan today, as we saw my match reaction, I watched it, Sassuolo versus Milan 3-3, beautiful, performance but well not beautiful beautiful you know fact they scored three goals but <laughs> they could have lost that game six three 
in reality. But yeah, if we go like the recent fixtures by Inter, definitely there's been some lethargic or like you know a bit of overconfidence stepping in, which is natural. Like when you run away with the league, that's what happened with Napoli last year. I remember, you know, by March they just completely uh, almost stopped playing. Um, and yeah, you can see this one. Even the last game, I didn't even watch uh, the Udinese game, um, but I know thanks to you guys' comments, it wasn't a great performance at all. Um, but we won that game into Empoli. Oh, into Empoli actually was it that bad? I mean, yeah, into Napoli, uh, wasn't that great. And obviously, Atletico Inter was not good, but into Empoli, I remember it not being that bad, was it? Yeah, the Inter Empoli was pretty good, but I know what you mean in general. We've kind of been trending, trending downwards, Mattia. I, I, um, I agree. But anyway, yeah, shout out Christian Potato, Matteo, ciao, glad, Zio, this is, glad to see you back. Very disappointed. Performances at the Champions League exit. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, that Champions League exit would kind of um, put a bit of a fire on, in, you know, on our backside. But it kind of, we keep, kept going. But, but yeah, com- as um, Wing Chun her left says, yeah, complacent, especially from the defence. No doubt we'll get the sucker tower. Or well, even Wing Chun her left saying he was the one, you know, a few weeks ago still saying, you know, calm, you know, we, never know you never know we know that now we all know that even the i think even the superstitious interisti are now giving up on the whole jinxing and all that i saw anthony from inter worldwide even he's given up on uh on the anti-jinx now ross g what's up oh, we got milanisti we got some milanisti in the house it seems that since going out of the champions league inter have dropped a few levels of intensity yeah yeah i agree i agree um and again, I think it is a little bit natural, kind of just kind of human nature of like, you just know, you know, this league is one. So even if it's the one, even if it's one percent a drop off or even two percent, like, you know, it might sound really tiny, but that makes a big difference. And I think this year Inter just dropped off one or two percent, um, which is why, you know, I would like Inzaghi to see, continue to have a bit of rotation. I keep wanting, you know, Pratesi to start or you know give a, a, some other chances to other players that are, you know um maybe a bit more hungry uh and of course less tired as well uh obvious handball 100 shameful as edson says michael Somers, we are not the same team after atletico yeah uh really hope they serve the t- top tier level yeah i think so i think so i think we've got i think we've got something in the bag for me that's the, that's the thing with this team though isn't it guys we kind of save their best performances for the big games outside of Atletico away, I know, but we've seen this into this season. Um, you know, the big games have not really uh have not really failed. Um yes, maybe again you could say that Napoli won, but yeah, I think we'll have something. And it's you know the, the winning it in the derby, if that doesn't motivate these guys to get that extra one or two percent, I don't know what else will because that would be just mm, beautiful. Winning it, you know, in away. Are we home or away? Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah, winning it away. So we're away against Milan. So, you know, of course we're home because it's still the Miata Stadium, but we're away to Milan. You know, it will be 70, 75% uh, or 80%, however it works, percent Milanisti in the, in the crowd. They will not, they want to see, they want to delay our party. Um but it would make it so much sweeter just to win it in their faces, especially after what happened, you know, a couple of years ago when they won it, all those celebrations that they did, mentioning Hakan's name. Hakan and you know, the whole Hakan thing as well, of course, that makes it extra sweet. Um, he's been doing a few interviews recently. I don't know. If you go on YouTube, type in Hakan Chalanolu interview. He's done an interview. He's done a podcast with Inter just the other day that I, that I listened to. And then he did an interview with CBS as well, um, talking about it. So make sure you check it out. And you can tell, like, Hakan just, he wants, he's going to, I think he's going to remain, like, quiet and not going to say, he's not going to fire back about the, you know, the Latan thing and, you know, those chants they did. But he's saying, he said, you know, I've remained quiet, I've remained silent when all this stuff was going on. I've suffered in silence, actually. That's what he said. So he's going to enjoy this extra. But I think, He's gonna be the bigger man. I don't know if I would be. I I probably wouldn't be the bigger man in in his position. But I think Hakan, 
by the sounds of it that's what he's saying but maybe in the moment you know maybe if he has a couple of drinks he might he might let some let some shots let some shots go but yeah we have to we have to win that derby next now yeah now because we don't if we won today we would have just needed a draw against milan next week to win the scudetto but now a uh it's just it has to be a win it has to be a win and yeah exactly maybe this will light a fire under their ass there be Kerr, Kerr Mafia in the house. What's up? Kerr B, another moderator in the house. Hope you're doing, brother. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> when they are nice contra, yeah. That guy came on, I think. Um, did he even do anything? I don't think that guy even did anything. I mean, now the thing with Arnautovic is his performances look so bad because Alexis now actually is has been playing quite well. Alexis is now not, you know, that embarrassing Alexis from the beginning of the season. He's actually contributing at an assist today good performance i think he deserved a, a goal today whereas arnautovic came on and yeah nothing no singing oh i was thinking of starting with you know because we are still capolista guys like we can we can you know moan and bitch all we want today but you know i could have started the stream today i mean loki i wanted to start with like a polista zeneva but you know just because the way match ended it, it doesn't feel quite right but you know we we can we can sing we can sing in uh, in in peace. Um, another one of the other half of the Kerr Mafia in the house. Or we could say you know forty five percent, fifty five percent. We'll give it to to Debbie and forty five percent to to Ian. I'm sure he doesn't mind. Vasti in the house. Oh, good to see you, bro. Absolute joke that the goal wasn't chopped off and ball, but we're not good enough today. Time to smash the cousins for that second star. Olsen, draw is a birthday gift. Oh, that is not nice. That is not nice. I wish Inter would have given you a better birthday gift, bro. Um, and I don't know if you guys follow the interviews podcast. Um, Alessandro Rafa, one half of that podcast, he was at the San Siro today to watch this game. So, you know, it would look like a great atmosphere and some good football being played. But yeah, probably not the game that he wanted to be spectating a 2-2 draw to Cagliari I'm sure he would have wanted to to get a win under his belt so my condolences to you guys what's up bro Eduardo hope you are doing well I guess we are all waiting for Derby Day yes we are we are rubbing our hands for Derby Day and thank you Eduardo for being a member for 27 months that is just amazing support to the channel really really appreciate you bro Indro the resident comedian of the channel Inter is too complacent right now. I agree. Keston, I thought he was be playing. He was really, really poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Milanisti trying to troll. That's uh, that's that's fair enough. Robbed by incompetence. I wonder if that equal has stood. I have no idea, bro. I have no idea. And yeah, thank you, Mattia. The the referees and VAR today forgot the rules of Serie A and football in general. But you guys don't forget the rules of this channel. You have to like and subscribe, of course. Is the handball? Yeah, exactly. It's usually, you know, for for defense defensive players, usually it's a little. There's a bit of leeway sometimes, but you know, we saw it. Well, literally, what the penalty that we got, you know, is the perfect kind of um, explanation. Like literally, you know, there's not much. I mean, there's not much wrong in Mina, does there? Like. I do find these penalties harsh, but they are they are penalties by the you know the the handbook, the the rule book. So La Padula pretty much does the similar same thing that you know deflects the ball, the trajectory of the ball with his um, you know elbow or arm, whatever it was, in the same way as this is a penalty. That's just you know a uh, an inf in a foul. So I have no idea how that was left. Um, yeah, I just know. I have no idea. Stupid TNT comms claimed it hit La Padula on the back. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes it was uh, TNT comms. It just look, I was watching the, the Zone Italian stream today, so luckily I didn't get to hear any of that incompetence. Another extremely poor performance. I don't want to say extremely poor, Stefan, but yeah, especially by yeah our standards this year. I, no, actually, you're right, Stefan. By our standards this year, that was just really, really poor. Really, really poor. Because, yeah, I can't even say that, you know, we created loads of chances that we didn't take them away. Like, let's have a look at the um, XG, actually. I am pretty sure it wasn't that high today. 
Uh, I know we had loads of possession, but it wasn't very incisive possession in the end. 2.34, I mean, at the end, we also have to, to you know, that's um, including the penalty. The penalty usually is, what, 0.78 or something, 0.8 XG. Um, so non-penalty XG, we're talking, you know, 1.5. So, and, you know, Cagliari have got one. So, yeah, of course, we've created more than Cagliari and whatever, but it wasn't like a, a game where I'm, like, scratching my head or, like, screenshotted some crazy chances that we missed. It was just, you know, decent football at times, but very, very complacent and very, um, yeah, just no killer instinct really today. The derby became more... Yeah, but that's how we won it, no, Indra? Like, otherwise, it wouldn't be a derby. We need to have a little bit. We need to have a little bit of stress going into that derby. That's what makes it enjoyable. Elkan Lee robbed us from breaking the Fugazi points record. I think we still can, no? I think we still can break. I think it was we were we, we were allowed to draw one game, and we can now we have to win every single game to break that hundred and or to I think reach the hundred and two points. Um, but I, I guess that's oh, that's what Victor means, break the record. Yeah, so we can still reach the record, but we can't break the record because of this. I think. Miss you guys too, man. Miss you guys too. I can't accept this lack of consistency in Serie A. Well, yeah. I still think Serie A refereeing is... I, I watched a lot of, you know, I watched a lot of Premier League today. I watched a few Premier League games. I still um, think the refereeing in Italy is still better than most other leagues. But yeah, it's, you know, in the age of VAR now, like, it just doesn't make any sense to me, the inconsistencies. Lucas asks, would you like to see us acquiring as... A who would you like to see as, as an additional strike in the summer transfer window? Ooh, um, I do like Goodmanson. I know a lot of people like Zerxi, but I've had my reservations. Like, I love watching Zerxi, but I think he needs a lot of work doing with him, coaching, development to him. So in terms of price to performance or, you know, um, performance ratio. I think Goodmanson can be that guy from Genoa that can come in straight away. In terms of, you know, if Alexis leaves, we need a you know a small, fast dribbler, nimble guy. You know, kind of like an Alexis or a little over over. You know, when Taram is not there, when Alexis leaves, like we need someone with a little bit different characteristics to the other guys because we got Taremi coming in was like, you know, the Jekyll. Or Arnautovic of the situation, you know, uh, or Lautaro, like, you know, the bigger number nine. But I would like to see someone of a bit different characteristics um, have been rotated. Now, this is an interesting conversation to have, guys. The Acerbi. Acerbi, um, yeah, Acerbi today, I've seen a lot of hate towards Acerbi. Well, not hate, but like people are saying, like, it's, it's probably time. It's time to go, maybe, or you know, this must be his last year. So, a chair be obviously after the let's ignore. I know, of course, it's, you can't just ignore things like that, but I'm saying for this conversation for now, let's ignore the a chair be drama with you know, Juan Jesus and all that kind of stuff. What what is your opinion on a Cherby in terms of let, let me just check his, his contract ends next summer? Yeah, so his contract ends next summer. And for some reason, there was rumors that his contract was going to be extended to 2026 or even 2027, even though he is what 35, right? Was he 30, 36? So to me, I mean, I, I, I would not renew that contract. And you know, I think we need to look already before the whole drama that's what i'm saying like ignoring i'm very objective Bef before the the drama before the controversy before today's performance to me it's already time to look forward and plan ahead and plan for life after francesco cherby don't mind him staying you know to finish out his contract for the one more year but i think we need to make that proactive you know move the Benji Pavard move, um, the Marcus Turan move that we did this year, or you know the the Onana move we did last year, to, you know to replace Andanovic to phase out Andanovic. We need to make that move because when a player hits 35, 36, the decline can come like this. Yes, uh, Cherby, by the way, has had a great season once again. 
last season on this channel we voted him our player of the season so and i think this year he's still one of the players of the season again at Cherby. but you're starting to see some signs of decline potentially and with the when the 36 year old especially center back modern football with physicality and athleticism is important he could become a um a uh you know a problem very very quickly uh if it's not addressed some people are also talking about you know having maybe b sec move into a center center back position which potentially could happen um but we definitely need to start looking to the to that um here he is anthony privatera so um make sure you guys check him out if he is doing his reaction on inter worldwide my brother and of course Anthony, we gotta if you're still here, we gotta link up, of course, to uh to discuss and to celebrate together soon, as we always do. Me and Anthony, we go way back to we've been making content since the banter era, guys. So we were here to celebrate four spots when Vecino and Nangolan were scoring those important goals, but we were also here in the Conte season, but we were also here in the Europa Lo yeah, Europa League loss and the Champions League final loss. We're here, whether it's rain or shine. Um, love how Alexis plays when he's fired up. He really wanted, yeah, and he really was feeling that kind of um, rivalry today between him and Yerimina. I don't know if they've got history. You know, he's from Colombia. Alexis, obviously, a legendary player for Chile. They must have had some battles over the years in you know Copa America and stuff like that. So maybe there's some history behind the it looked like it but it definitely did fire up alexis hey old haro sonero he'll be in san siro no matter what game on the monday i'll be there oh so wow he is gonna be there um for the monday derby which is really weird isn't it guys monday a monday derby uh derby di milano really really weird uh timing for derby di milano so wishing my friend Fabrizio from Old Haro Sonero, make sure you check him out on his channel if you're into seeing our oh, Milanisti cousin suffer. I wish him the worst. I wish him pain and suffering and tears. And I wish him Hakan celebrating in front of him like this from scoring a penalty that doesn't even, shouldn't have even a penalty from a dodgy um, rebound that hits you know tomori in the back of the head and hits him on the you know the shoulder where the referee gives it handball that's the type of that's the type of win i want to have against milan on <laughs> on uh on, the, on next monday why is it on the monday man such a weird oh, i guess maybe it's for their to accommodate for milan's uh europa league games for their thursday night that's probably what it is you know champions league dna but they're in europa league um yeah, as long as we come in in the derby, I don't care exactly. I think that's how we all feel. Simple, see me in the house. What's up, brother? Oh, he's got a nice new logo. Nice to see. Give them way too much time on the board for talking to fans. Very poor compared to the performances. Yeah, very, very poor. Very, very poor. Alexis deserves an extension. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Ludi. I mean, maybe they'll give it to him. I mean, he's not on high wages anymore now, which is good. So I think he's on like two and a half million net, which is... I mean, again, if he maybe even reduces them further because he has only a one-year contract. So as a fifth, but then he has to be really, you know, happy to be the fifth guy. I'm really, I'm quite surprised I'm opening up to this, but as a fifth choice, yes. But as a fourth, nah, nah. It's quite, I mean, likeliness, yeah. I mean, you know how Inter operate. I think it's, potentially quite likely if they don't find you know any other cheap options out there on the market you and it seems like alexis is still quite keen to play in europe that's the thing you know he doesn't want to go to saudi for some reason and, and his money seems like he's still quite hungry even if he's a sub at inter to, to stay in europe that's why let's not forget how are we yet no we're not forgetting that bro we're not forgetting that um we need a killer, but that means Indra, that means you're trying to what you're trying to replace Lautaro. You're trying to replace Lautaro, you're trying to replace Turam. I mean, I think the, the front, unless Turam, unless we sell Turam, then you know you gotta look at you know, yeah, the replacement. But it's gonna be Turam. 
Duram Lautaro, uh, Indro. Um, that's the starting duo. Then if, when Taremi comes in, then you know maybe can you know try to challenge for for Taram spot. But the 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 Taram spot, you know, Lautaro is the main guy. So he, if he's the killer, it's Lautaro. Whether you don't consider him in the killer, um, you probably still don't, even though he's had that amazing season. But he's the main guy. The guy behind them has the is the guy that you know has to be roaming around. We just need. You know, if Turam stays, we just need to be him to just have that growth that we've seen from Lautaro as well. Um, very easy to say, you know, just be more clinical, have a killer instinct. But, you know, that's what separates the, the elite, elite strikers in the world from the from the rest. To quote the guy from AFTV, it's time to go. Rest in peace, Lord. Um... I should be looked old today. No, no, I obviously I don't under, underestimate anything. I'm just talking about planning. As I said, to me, I know some people wanted to like cancel his contract and stuff, but to me, you know, he's got his contract till 2025 next season. Keep him there. Um, and yeah, let's uh, see how, how things develop. Uh, if, we, if we have money to buy another center back, obviously it's not going to be Edson. I'll tell you that for free right now. Um, it's not going to be Kim Min Jae from Bayern. We, they just paid, what, 50 million for him just last summer. So it's not going to be that. And we negotiated the whole summer to try to get Pavard to us for, what, what did we pay, 25 million? Um, and that's a guy that they, you know, they weren't like, you know, crazy about keeping. They just kind of needed to just wait you know, numerically. I've got a shape button. Oh, my God. Today was my worst day on Twitter, guys. Officially, Joey Barton. Uh, maybe people that are not too familiar with, like, you know, Premier League football or, like, English um, pop culture or Twitter world. Uh, just look him up, Joey Barton. Just, you know, not a nice human being. Former QPR player, former Marseille player, former Newcastle player. Who else did he play for? Um, Man City as well, didn't he, at some point? Yeah. Was a thug of a footballer and now is also... A, seems like he wants to be like a politician. I don't know what he wants to be. But anyway, he uh, quote tweeted me today and his uh, anti-vax uh, Union Jack gang on Twitter were also quote tweeting me. So... Um, yeah, funny day, funny day. Lowest point of my life getting quoted by uh by Joey Barton. Yeah, exactly. Debbie knows exactly what I'm talking about. Barton is a ball bag. <laughs> um, but anyway, guys, let me get into the usual uh, screenshots that I've prepared. Uh, just for you know, five ten minutes before I go. It was a pre match. It was an interesting pre match. There was a few uh, former players um who turned up uh to watch into today so we saw Handanovic was also honored for his 455 games uh at Inter. I don't know why they chose to do it today I mean I feel like they should have done it at the beginning of the season um so yeah he was there and then speaking of other goalkeepers his teammate from last year Andrew Onana was also there you can see him here pictured with the uh, Dumfries and I don't know guys is Onana secret agent, Man United agent Onana trying to, you know, tell him like, bro, you know, I know Man United are seventh in the league, but if he is, then Onana is an Inter legend. If Onana manages to convince Dumfries to leave Inter, um, no, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but yeah, Dumfries is still my, if I had to sell one player, Dumfries is number one on that list still, as he was last year. And he still is this year. If we can get that 20 plus, 25 plus million for Dumfries, and then we can try to reinvest that. That is still my ideal situation. But yeah, Onana back there. It was nice to see. Um, and then, oh yeah, there, were also, we, there was also Walter Samuel in the stands I saw. Um, and also the the president, the UEFA president was also in the stands. So it was a interesting um, amount of uh, people former players and important people watching who is one oh yeah mr amit by the way is a liverpool fan so yeah not a great day for him 
chatting what trash does United have so he was so up lol yeah I mean I saw also I mean I don't want to laugh too hard because I saw also Gazeta I mean Gazeta you know not the greatest um, source but they were linking us as a free agents agent move to one Bissaka from when United so as much as I might be laughing he might the other he's literally one Bissaka is like the Man United version of Dumfries in terms of you know athletically defensively very good very solid uh, and one Bissaka is probably even better than Dumfries defensively but on the ball and uh footballing IQ wise yeah we were struggling we we're struggling but yeah it was good to see it was good to see uh Onana and uh, yeah you know you know a year or two when Zoma is getting old and Onana, you know, his contract has started to near ex- expiration, you know, we might have to cook up one of those special special deals uh, with Man United that we like to cook up after a while. And uh, getting into, uh, oh yeah, there was also yeah, the uh, Luis Alberto news that broke out that he wants to leave as a free agent even though he's got a contract until what 2027 um no he wants to you know leave Lazio straight away but i think i think <laughs> uh, we we need to be realistic like how many midfielders do you want we've already got zielinski coming in um you know that's just overkill um and i definitely don't want to i can see already the wage it's going to be something that we're going to have to discuss with the with the excel sheets we're already I don't want Marotta to make, and not, not that he made the mistake really, but the one maybe mistake he did at Juve was the wage. As of obviously, Juve just kept winning eight, nine units in a row. So obviously, players were demanding more and more money. But by the time he left, that wage level was just too high. And then you have one year off, like, you know, let's say you don't win the title, you don't progress in Champions League, then, like, especially in Inter's financial condition, like, one off year like god forbid we have an off year that we you know don't progress in champions league or you know miss out or just have a bad performance you gotta yeah like we gotta manage this the wage um budget <laughs> no more excel sheets you love it really Mattia. you love it you love the excel sheets don't lie don't you lie to me boy Mikiao, Luis Alberto, and I mean, yeah, I mean, Luis Alberto as well. Like, if you watch him, like that guy, you know, he's he wasn't blessed, you know, athletically. Um, whereas Mikitarian, even at his age, you know, he's going, he's still a machine. Luis Alberto don't have the same, I don't think he has the same body type and also that same kind of professionalism, dedication, uh, to the craft as uh, Mikitarian does. Um, like Luis Alberto, how old is he? What, 32? Which is not old. 31, yeah. So he's not old at all, but, you know. Of course, I'd love to have him. Again, he's another guy, like, speaking about Zerxi, how I love watching Luis Alberto. I love watching Zerxi, but a few years ago, yeah, Luis Alberto was probably the perfect, you know, midfielder for Inter. But right now, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, you know, will you next year when Mkhitaryan leaves, maybe, maybe. Anyway, going back to the uh, screenshots, it was it was a good start by Inter overall. Uh, first half was pretty good, 1-0 up. Uh, first, um, there was a good shot by Barella. I didn't manage to get a screenshot of that. There was a great shot from Barella from outside of the box. Um, you know, you probably wouldn't the mind is scoring against his old club although i think he still you know has a soft spot for Cagliari. he's from there um sanchez passes this out to di marco who tries to hit this well already goes pretty wide but good start from inter but at the same time there was also signs of uh, Cagliari on the counter attack inter weren't very focused on the counters um Lugumbo, who is very um interesting player i think you know well, I think Cagliari are probably going to be safe, but I was going to say, you know, maybe a mid-table or higher mid-table it, it's Serie A team. We could pick someone like Lubumbo up. Very good 1v1 player, nice left foot, uh, pace, power, good technique as well. Uh, gave us a bit of trouble today. Almost curls it in. Uh, Zoma looked like he was beaten, but luckily it was wide off the mark. 
And then the goal happens, uh, great play out on the right-hand side, Barella to Darmian, Darmian passes it to Alexis, and Alexis centers it to Ticus to Ram, and we've been waiting for a while for Ram to score. Um, let me have a quick look, actually, to Ram. When's the last time he scored? Great, and this is the first time, actually, I think Alexis and Turam have combined this season um, for anything. So let's have a quick look. When's the last time Turam scored? So in the league... Last time that Turam scored was against Salernitana all the way back in the mid-February. So, yeah, two months we've been waiting for Turam to score. Uh, obviously, he had that injury in between as well. But, yeah, it's been a while since uh, we saw Tikus Turam scoring. So, it was really good to see. And he celebrated with the Lautaro celebration, you know. Um, this guy um, always likes copying player celebrations uh Dilberto not saying just sign a new country before saying you want to leave yeah that's the thing this contract that's that's the funny thing he's his contract goes on it's not like it's, it's expiring soon and i saw lotito lotito spoke about it today you know lazio president he said his contract is in 2027 like we can't like alberto must have like a value on the books of you know lazio so if they cancel his contract that means that like last year just take a loss on that value like like why would lotito do that so he's probably yeah like they'll probably demand like some sort of low transfer fee or something if it is like that's desperate situation but yeah players like you get yourself into these situations yourself if you sign these um long-term contracts uh into milton i like him but again like you know these these players are, you know, are good for like I think mid-table Serie A teams, like teams that play on the counter-attack. For a team that plays, you know, that dominates the ball, plays against closed defenses. I know what you mean, like you know, inter like need players with you know dribbling ability. That's, that's what I was talking about with Goodmanson, um, the guys to replace, you know, a Sanchez or to sub in for to ram the kind of winger slash second striker role, but. You know, I think he's, he's. I don't think he's like into level. Um, continuing on. Oh yeah, there was a stat from Opta uh, for Turam. You know, he's had a great season, Turam, but his second half of the season has been pretty average. Like he had an amazing first half, average second half. And so he kind of, I think if if you balance the both, he's had a good season, good first season, better than I um, kind of envisaged that first half. And then worse than I thought in the second half. But you know, look at it stat wise. Since 2004 and 5, Turam is this only the second player to have scored more than 10 goals and provide more than five assists in his first Serie A. It's a very specific stat, to be fair. So it only counts the first season of a striker with the Nerazzurri. But still, you know, he's in good company with Samuel Eto'o, 12 plus 6 at Eto'o had in 2009 10. Of course, he was playing mainly as a winger at Eto'o that year. Um, but yeah, good company to be in for Ticus. Um, Barella scored a lovely, lovely offside goal, headed goal. Um, he was offside, but yeah, it was beautiful. It was a shame that that didn't uh count. And then, yeah, again, we kept seeing signs of you know Cagliari being dangerous and Inter just kind of being a bit lackadaisical here. Shomurodov had a pretty poor first half, he punished us in the second half, but. You know, he should have done better in some situations in the first half here. Barella, great block. But again, Inter, uh, not great. And Yerimina, as I was saying, with Sanchez, it was an ongoing beef throughout the match. Uh, he even pinched Sanchez at one point because Sanchez was saying to the referee, like, he's, he's pinched me in, like, the, the hip or something. Like, he was really trying to get under Alexis' skin. He was doing a good job of it, to be fair. But Alexis was also doing a good job of getting under his skin. Uh, but yeah, Mina in general, shit housing his way. Um, got himself booked as well. He gave away the penalty, which I thought, you know, I was enjoying. I was like, take that up yours, Mina. But in the end, he kind of had also the last laugh, I guess, with the draw because for Cagliari, that's like a win. But yeah, it's always it's good to see characters like that, though. Uh, like, you know, the Premier League, they have Neil Mo Mopai, you know, the guy that plays for Brentford now. A bit of a shit house. Um, you know, I think football needs that. You can't have too many nice guys out there. 
Um, oh, sorry for the screenshot of this one, really blurry because uh, I didn't manage to screen. I had to screenshot this off Twitter. But yeah, this is the first um, goal. Lovumbo shoots it through Bastoni's legs. Bastoni today actually won, was awarded the Player of the Month for Serie A. But I think he could have done a bit better in this situation. Kind of, he had too much separation from um, Shomurodov here, and then Shomurodov shoots it through his legs, which obviously you can't do too much about. But I think both Acerbi and him could have done a bit better in this situation. And then Zoma gets a hand on it, but I don't blame him because they went through Bastoni's uh, legs. So it's always hard to predict the trajectory when it goes like that. And then Sanchez actually had a, almost scored the um, a goal straight after that from a header. Di Marco crosses in. Good diving header by Sanchez. Just goes wide. And then this guy, Fratesi, his like, clutch gene needs to be studied. He's like, whenever he comes on, almost every single time he makes an impact. He's got a talent, this boy, for just making stuff happen, even if it's complete chaos. And just like this, you know, I don't think this header was particularly dangerous, but he got in front of Mina, got his header, won the penalty, makes his impact as usual. Um, and then the Hakan slots it away, which, you know, I thought this was the winner. You know, I thought Inter, you know, we're going to at least handle the, the situation. But look at this penalty. As I, I tweeted, this is actually, I think, I have to look back and think about it, but this might be one of Hakan's worst penalties which is a crazy statement because it shows how good his penalties have been at Inter because it's still quite, you know, well-directed in the corner, on the floor. But before, because the keeper, Scoufet, actually gets a little touch on it, a little hand on it, um, it goes down as maybe well, not one of Hakan's best penalties, but it's just his record. I think he's 15 out of 15 now. Just You can just close your eyes and just know Hakan's going to score the penalties. It's just amazing. But it's a shame that it wasn't to be the three-point clinching goal in the end. And here it is, the goal that we conceded at the end. One long ball punted up. Again, defence not good enough. Acerbi, Bisek, Bastoni, all three of them. Mainly, I think, yeah, Bisek and Acerbi kind of letting the team down here. Um, but yeah, it should have been called off, as we already discussed, because um, Lapadula touches it with his arm completely should have not stood great finish by viola uh, on the volley um, no chance for zoma again but it shouldn't have stood but yeah this one and in the end they should have won it really viola should have scored his second goal and should have uh killed off inter should have been three two um because that was a massive massive chance but he then he headed it straight to jan zoba lucky for us um yeah Turam has had a big dip since his injury, especially. Dalton TJ, oh, he had a stinker. He had a stinker Buchanan today after he came on. Every time, I think they counted literally every single time Buchanan had the ball. Let's uh, pull up his stats. He had four out of five passes, nine touches, but I think there was two times he had the ball out on the left-hand side when he came on. And both times... Tyler, he managed to counterattack after he tried to cross it in, or actually one time he tried to dribble, and he lost the ball. And then the other time he just yeah gave the ball away, and the counter. And I think that's that, that yeah this moment happened off the TJ giving the ball. So yeah, not a good impact from uh, from TJ. Still, he still doesn't look well integrated into the team. Um, and I think today as well, like yeah, because Inter were trying to go for the win, he seemed like a bit panicky, a bit you know. Yeah, just not very um, calm and collected. But, you know, again, I'm not judging him this year. Next year is when I will judge uh, TJ. But, yeah, guys, one more game in, in, in theory. If we win the Milan derby, then the second star will be ours. Um, star will be added onto our shirts if we win next Monday. I know it's a really weird um, data of the Milan derby, but next Monday we'll find out whether mission second star is complete. Man of the match, who shall we give it to? I actually would give it to maybe Alexis, to be honest, today. I really enjoyed Alexis's game. You know, he was fighting. He was um, uh, creating, obviously got an assist. Maybe he could have even got a goal. Uh, I liked Alexis's performance. Um, yeah, Hakan was good. Mkhitaryan wasn't good. 
And Barella, yeah, was decent. But yeah, apart from that, yeah, I'd give it to Alexis. Alexis is my my other match. I don't know if you guys have any comments about that. I'm gonna preview. I'm gonna disappear. No, no, I'm back now. I'm definitely gonna be previewing that. I'll probably yeah. Maybe I'll have to get old Haro Sonero, one of the Milanisti on the channel, to get their views to see how salty they are about this uh, about this uh, this year that we uh, that we had. Debbie says Hakan. Fair enough. Yeah, I think Hakan's also there. I like TJ, like the challenge, your speed daring, but like whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's just not there quite yet. Clima Derby, yes, we are in the derby mood, even though it's obviously still not the same feeling because it's kind of we're kind of cruising to the scudetto, but yeah, we need that win. We need that win next week, and it will make it so so much sweeter. But thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I am back. Sorry for the uh, absence. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um Mission Second Star continues. Mission Second Star could be clinched next week in the Derby. So keep a lookout on the channel for all the content. Um, yeah, thank you everyone that tuned in. Now, Sean, have a look at what you could have won. That's oh, what do you mean? What you could have won? Um, hit the like button. Thank you everyone that tuned in. Ciao, ragazzi. Always, always. Porta Inter. La Capolista se ne va.